Okay, welcome back. So this is the second segment where we're going to look more specifically at the AMT functionality for MARC agreements. Okay, so this is the solution map that we saw in the first uh, segment. And really what we're going to do now is just go into a bit more detail around each one of these uh, processes just to give you a flavor for the functionality that is in AMT. So first of all, the asset register. So AMT has a register of all your assets. It's not, in this context, a financial asset register. It's not doing the capitalization of assets and depreciation of assets. Rather, it's an operational register of all of your assets. So it allows you to see the assets and see the base information around the asset. What's your model, the serial number, when was it purchased, what's its expected life, etc. And categorizations, which customer is it with, who's the sales rep, your account managers, etc. The utilization and severity. So within AMT, for each asset, you can record the expected utilization and productivity and some severity factors. So we do the severity factors by identifying the impact on components. So probably the best example is uh, fuel burn is quite a good severity factor. So if it's um, if if you think the 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 pit is going to get deeper and steeper, hall grades, etc., and your fuel burn is going to go up. You can plot that in, um, and that's, if you can see it, is what's shown here. Now, the impact of that is you can actually link your engine life then to fuel liters burnt, as opposed to saying it's going to last 15,000 engine hours. You can say it's going to last whatever that equates to a million liters of, of uh, fuel. So as your fuel burn goes, uh, rate goes up because of the increased severity, the effective life of the equipment in, of the engine in engine hours comes down. You can also use it to associate the productivity, i.e. The, the tons moved. And you can make this dependency cycle as complex as you want. You can have cycle times and tons per cycle, etc. Really just depends what the output is that you want. So this usage profile for us is really used to not just define the utilization, but also if you're wanting to do productivity analyses of cost per ton and things, you can do that. But you can also put um, the factors for other maintenance drivers, not just engine hours, but fuel burn, maybe walking time for tracks, those sort of things. And this can vary over time. So it doesn't have to be one set for the equipment's life. By date range, you can have any variation in that usage profile. Now this is the most, this is what we call the advanced utilization. For a lot of your smaller assets, you can just go and say it's going to do 3,000 engine hours a year and that's it. So you don't have to go to this level of complexity for every asset. Now AMT does have an asset ledger, which is the financial side, but that's not applicable. That's only really applicable if you implement the rental. So we'll, we'll skip through that. Strategy definition. So this is setting up what we call your projections and strategy tasks. Often it's called maintenance plans. So um, a lot of people will refer to maintenance plans. Uh, for us, that means strategy tasks. And it's your standard life cycle costing structure. So people have seen calculator or analyzer. The basic concept is much the same where you've got all of your uh, strategy tasks listed down. It's your components. It's your it's your PM services. Um, uh, any item that's got a a, um, a frequency and a cost associated with it. And this is really the heart of the life cycle costing within within AMT. Coming out of that comes your cost per hour charts, your component forecasts. Again, it is really the engine room of that life cycle costing within AMT. Now, from each one of these strategy tasks, 
you can drill down into quite a bit of detail. You can be, um, there's a lot more information you can be capturing. There's a lot of different scheduling methods, suppression, dependencies. Each one of those lines can actually be made up of multiple jobs. You might have a remove and install for an engine, a repair, etc. The, the other aspects of defining your maintenance strategy, there's, there's a couple of other sort of areas that we, that we sort of drill into more detail. The first is what we call RCM or reliability centered maintenance. So this is where you're looking at particularly your big components, something like an engine, and you're saying, yeah, we think it's going to last, it should last 18,000 hours. That should be our before failure target. But you also need to recognize that maybe 20% of the time it's going to be an after failure occurrence. In that situation, it's going to have a lower life, probably a higher cost. And that needs to be factored into your life cycle costing. The other aspect of it is you, you want to start defining the different ways it can fail and what you're going to do to prevent it, how you're going to identify it. That drives a lot of your condition monitoring. Um, and that's really that maintenance strategy uh, definition. So I think Caterpillar's got a program called MSR, Maintenance Strategy Reference, I think, where you document your maintenance strategy and why you've decided to put a certain life on components and uh, whether you're going to be using reman, exchange, etc., and identifying those different failure modes. So this is the equivalent module within AMT. So you can be going down to your failure modes and documenting by failure mode what it is that you're going to be doing to prevent that failure from um, from happening. But the other side, as I mentioned, is it's also driving into your life cycle costing. So that incremental cost for those failures that happen 20% of the time, that gets factored into your, into your life cycle costing through a repair reserve. So from that maintenance plans or your strategy tasks, you really have that RCM element of looking at the different failure modes and how you're going to prevent those and defining that level of strategy. And the lowest level is you can actually then put in your associated condition monitoring so that when you bring in your condition monitoring data, it's interpreting those against the failure modes. So it's highlighting to the users, uh, to your maintenance planners, that not just that your silicon level has gone up on your engine oil, but that is an indicator that there's um, contamination of the oil and that can cause such and such a failure on the engine. So it's providing that extra level of automation of the condition monitoring coming back into, into AMT. So that's the, uh, I guess, the sort of the RCM bit. Standard jobs. So AMT has a full standard job system where you can uh, either be creating them or, as I mentioned previously, be importing them from Builder. And, um, and that covers your standard, standard job functionality, your bill of materials, quantity of parts that are going to be used, your labor requirements, any other miscellaneous requirements. It's fairly generic standard job functionality. It is all aligned to the Caterpillar codes and the probability of parts usage and all of those sort of things are, are covered. And then your electronic work scopes. So by work scopes, we mean job instructions. So you can be, or check sheets. So you can, in AMT, you can build up electronically your check sheets and your job instructions. Or you can just attach documents, Adobe, Word documents, that every time that job is scheduled for the planner, those job instructions appear and will automatically print out when he prints his, his job folder. So strategy definition for us is a lot more than just saying we're going to do an engine at 16,000 hours. It's about identifying what is your strategy for optimizing the life of that. Are you going to do it based on condition or are you just going to run it to failure or are you going to just do it on schedule? Um, and if it is on condition, what do you mean by condition? What are the conditions? When you come to do the engine, what do you mean you're going to do an engine and it's going to cost, I don't know, what rand terms, a million rand? What are the parts that you're going to need? What's your expected labor requirements? And what are your job instructions associated with it? So the planner doesn't have to second guess when he gets told he's got a plan for an engine. 
he knows exactly what he's got to plan for. The parts are listed down, the labor requirements, the job instructions. It takes that element of work away. So the more you can define in that in your maintenance strategy up front, the more it streamlines your downstream workflow processes. So that's quite a big area with an AMT, the strategy definition. And again, you can make it as complex as you want. If you've got a PM agreement on a four to eight backhoe, yeah, you're not going to go into a whole level of level of detail um, because you're probably never going to get to do an engine change out on a four to eight backhoe. You'll probably just focus on your PM services. Um, well, if it's a 994, yes, you're going to go into a lot more detail. So uh, AMT does allow allow you to put in that detail. You don't have to put in that all of that detail. It's really on a case by case basis. So the next step is then the long term planning. So the long term planning really that's about maintaining your component change out schedule and AMT has a, a grid where all of the uh, as soon as items hit what we call a planning window and you define that uh, by component. So for an engine it might be six months. It appears on the long-term planning schedule and at that point the user can update the date or the expected hours that it's going to be performed. They can view it graphically, they can, there's a Gantt chart, you can click and drag um, and uh, be optimizing that change our schedule. We also show uh, the PCV, so that is for the contract, are you ahead or behind budget for that component on that equipment? And we show the RIVIC. So the RIVIC is the residual value and component. And what that is doing is highlighting how much life is left, or we forecasting to be left on that component at the end of the contract. So this is, this is really important to understand, especially as you get into your last three or four years of a contract, where if we have a look, one of these items, I think this red one says 8%. So what that's telling the planner is, there's very little life left on that component at the end of the contract. So if you decide to bring it forward from this date a little bit, you're probably going to be bringing in another engine into your contract term that you haven't, that you're not currently forecasting. So conversely, there's quite a bit of benefit on sort of reducing your risk. If you can get a bit of extra life out of this engine, it means you're not cutting it quite as fine. Now we do highlight in, I think it's green, if it's sitting at, the Rivik is sitting at 95%, because what that is saying is you've got almost a brand new engine and at the end of the contract, we're forecasting that cost, but you know what, if you can get a bit of extra life, you can maybe save the cost of that engine. Again, it does depend on the specific terms of that individual uh, mark agreement, the contract you have with the customer. Uh, now the outputs from this, by maintaining this component change out schedule, you are updating the life cycle costing in AMT and all of the associated reports that come out of that. So we have productivity forecasts, availability forecasts, your utilization, your forecasting, your costs, your labor requirements, component forecasts, uh, specific part number forecasts, forecasting your consumable requirements. Again, all of that is being updated as you're moving items on that uh, the Gantt chart for components in and out. It's dynamically updating all of the other associated forecasts and the forecast reports. So that's the long-term planning. The short-term planning now really for us looks at that window of what's going to be done tomorrow, the next week, and maybe the next month. It's um, it's a uh, it's very much around your backlog management and the, the immediate uh, sort of urgent, urgent sort of planning. So this is where I'll sort of go through the functionality in AMT, but again, we just need to put in the context of how it's going to work with um, SAP. So the first thing is we've got the job capture. So the jobs in AMT come from many number of sources. The first is if it is a planned or a strategy task, then AMT will automatically create that work order. And when I say the work order in this 
context, let me just say AMT work order. And then you've got your defects that are identified through your inspections, uh, maybe your condition monitoring. Um, we, we have a mobile device for inspections that can automatically raise defects, product issues, uh, EM issues module will raise defects, or we can import from other sources. So there's many different ways of getting defects into AMT. The main point is every job that needs to be planned and performed on an equipment gets registered one way or another in AMT. There's a central planning grid that you, where the planners can see this, all the jobs that are outstanding, what the status of them um, are. The next step is they would, the planner would um, ensure that the job is correctly scoped and authorize the work. So, um, so maybe if it's a very large item, there needs to be special authorization. And there's a number of sort of authorization modes with an AMT. Now the job ready planning, this next level really gets done within SAP. So from AMT, the user will, once they decide, right, we're going to perform this work, they will create, there's a routine, a little button that they click in AMT, and that will automatically create a work order within SAP and transfer across the parts that are listed and labor requirements that are listed within AMT. From that point, the user, when they open the work order in AMT, it actually doesn't open the AMT work order, it'll jump and open the SAP work order. So the user will then work within the SAP work order to order those parts, check on the status of those parts. Um, that, is the, that is the planning system. The scheduling of the work, when it's going to be done, who it's going to do it, where it's going to be done, that gets done with an AMT. So this is very much your non-financial information. So, so AMT is scheduling the work, but the job ready status from SAP is being communicated back to AMT. So it's difficult to see, but there's a little on the grid there is a job ready status. And that status is coming back from AMT, uh, from SAP. So the planner can, although the planning is done within SAP, um, they can see in AMT the status, and from here, from AMT, you can click on any work order and open it, and it opens it in SAP. So we really tried to streamline that the user's interface between AMT and SAP in this area. But the scheduling, we have a Gantt chart, and they can schedule work, define when they're going to do it, who's going to do it, and that all gets done with an AMT. And then from AMT, they'll be able to produce their work plans, job folders, um, uh, sort of a, their weekly work plans, daily work plans, etc. So that's the short term planning, the execution of work. So within the mark scenario, this is very much around that shift log. Um, there's the shift log module in AMT is really aimed at your service uh, supervisor, your leading hand, the person who's on the floor, who's directing the traffic in a day, who's keeping a track of what's down, responding to breakdowns, and there is a grid where they will that person will see the status of all the work, see what is planned when it's due to come in. Once it does come in, they'll be updating it and saying, okay, it's now in progress, putting the actual downtime, the actual uptime. And if there's a breakdown, they'll be recording it with an AMT. So they might add a breakdown into AMT and decide they need a work order created. And from there, they will create the SAP work order through the same process that we've just mentioned. So um, there's two ways of viewing it. There's a, a grid that we really tried to make look as close to Excel as possible. People are used to generally having these in Excel spreadsheets or reports. Um, and then there's there's also a Gantt chart that just shows what is currently down, what is planned to come in, what's been down. So again, there's visibility on the state of the fleet at any point in time. Through this process, the downtime is captured. So AMT's got a, a structure where we have what we call events. Uh, downtime events. So coming in January from dispatch systems or manually being entered is the, is the event information, i.e. a truck's been down for 10 hours. 
And associated with the event, you can have many work orders. You might have five work orders that have done at the same time, but they're just done concurrently. And then there's your downtime analysis, which might say, well, it was down for 10 hours, but we spent three hours waiting for the operator. Maybe that shouldn't be charged against the contract. Uh, so although it was a 10 hour event, seven hours goes against the dealer's availability and three hours is against the customer. So it does provide a structure for ensuring that the, the downtime and the work that you performed is in one integrated database to support your reporting. Uh, the other thing that the shift log gives is quick access to equipment details. We generally, uh, it's, it's not practical, it's not intuitive for the service, uh, the supervisors, the foreman to be um, navigating through AMT to find uh, any equipment reference information. So we've tried to bring that all onto the same front screen where they can just view, quickly view equipment reports and their planning report. So if they want to see the status of components or the equipment statistics, i.e. the latest condition monitoring data or utilization information, uh, it's all available from the same the same menu. They don't have to navigate through different areas of, of AMT. And then the last bit that the shift log then supports is your daily reporting. So whether it's a, sort of a tracking of your availability to date during their month or a log of what was done yesterday and details. These are the more practical day-to-day -day reports to take to your, say, your 6 a.m. morning meetings with the customer. So that's the execution segment. And then the work finalization is the ability to capture that job information. And generally, we split this into two. There's the work order information about what parts were used and things that go onto the work order. Um, and then there's the other information, which is really around your, call it your SIMS reporting. Your, what was the part number that failed? Was it a breakdown? What's the service code? Was the symptom the cause? And there's a bunch of information. If it was a component change out, then there's additional information that you can enter in. You can attach photos, those sort of things. And um, it also flags if it's a potential warranty claim as well. So, um, which is useful. So that's that work finalization, but it really does fall into the two sort of segments. There's there's this more job information which gets captured in AMT, but then you'd still go through the same process in SAP to close the work order um, from a financial closure, get it out of work basically. Okay, so that's the work management uh, process. Now, I haven't mentioned a couple of other modules that aren't being deployed at the moment, like the NT Mobile and the CBM module. Um, they're sort of listed as a, as a phase two. So on the decision support side, there is the strategy optimization is the main area. And I'll quickly run through these, but it's really... It's a lot of functionality looking at your maintenance strategy from any number of angles. Um, so it's uh, the main focus is about reviewing your maintenance strategy in light of what your current knowledge is to say, can you be smarter about how you do it in the future? So the first thing is validating your assumptions. So if you've got a standard job that isn't accurate, then that actually does you a lot of damage. It means you continue to keep planning for the wrong parts getting the parts out, having to return some parts or order some on emergency that you haven't got. So the first step for us is validating your assumptions that you've used on your life and the costs of performing work. And we quantify those as to um, the highest variance, as it were, uh, through a concept of the ACI, the Annualized Cost Impact. And um, so that allows you to fairly quickly do an audit of all of your maintenance plans or strategy tasks to see which are the ones that are accurate, but more importantly, which are the most inaccurate ones. Just simple cost analyses, uh, being able to analyze your costs or transactions um, through any sort of number of uh, drill downs and uh, pie charts, and there's a lot of flexible analyses of your actual transactions and costs. The dynamic life cycle costing, that's really what's taking this forward-looking view. So this is 
about highlighting risks, about resource forecasting, and economic life. Um, so working with customers to say when is the optimal point to um, re replace equipment. Maybe the mark contract's finishing at a certain point, but is that the optimal time um, for the customer to um, to quit the equipment? Maybe it justifies an extension. Uh, component analyses. Oh, yeah. So just on the dynamic life cycle costing, so a lot of you would have seen this report. It's very similar to an analyzer report where you've got your original contract budget, which is a shaded gray area. Um, this point here where it's a dark shaded is your sort of uh, life to date or where we are now. The blue line is your actual costs and then the dotted blue line is your forecast cost to the end of the contract. So here this is showing that we're slightly over budget at the moment on the contract, but we're going to be a lot more over budget by the end of the contract. And that variance at the end we call the PCV, projected cost variance. And then you can drill down on that and analyze that variance by strategy task and then further drill down on what's driving that, that variance. Um, and again, this is really highlighting the analyses and that forward-looking view that AMT is providing. Component analysis. So this is analyzing your component performance. What is the average life? Are well, you getting that traditional sort of bell curve? So here we can see that this is the that sort of bell curve, but we've also got a lot of early failures that have that have taken place. Um, having a scatter diagram of the life that you've achieved or trending. So you can see that we sort of started off with a great bunching of um, you know we were doing very well, but we've just had three early failures. So our life is trending down. So maybe that's highlighting a product issue or a, uh, a quality issue with a CRC or something like that. And you can drill down and get a lot more information about what was the cause of those failures. Um, and then if you are using the CBM module, you can actually do trending of your condition monitoring data leading up to each failure. So you can start to see what are the real indicators and warning signs to help validate and improve those those assumptions. Uh, what if analyses? So be able to take a copy of your maintenance strategy, change any number of parameters, and um, and see is that going to be a good thing or not? I mean, is it is it worth is it worth spending an extra five hundred rand on oils each service to get another two thousand hours of life out of the, out of your engine? Again, those are the sort of what if analyses that you'd be doing. Lumped under this, we also have a product issues module uh, that we call EM issues, but it just allows you to log any product issue that you've got and then go through a defined resolution process and then come up with a short term and a long term corrective action. And from here, you can automatically create backlog work orders for equipment. So you might actually register PRPs, PSPs in here. Um, and then from here, you can automatically create the corrective work orders for, for all of those equipment matching, uh, matching the model and that you can flag. Um, it does also build a knowledge database. So over time, you'll have maintenance managers moving in and out of different sites. If a new person comes into a, a contract, he can look at the last four or five years and say, what are all the issues that we've had? And what's the history of those issues? So, Again, if someone has that issue on another site, they can look up and say, you know, this other site's also had this issue three years ago of overheating on a 789. This is what they did to fix it. This is who they spoke to in Caterpillar, etc. So it starts building that knowledge base within the organization. And then there's, there's also a parts usage analysis module. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, sorry, no, no. There is also a parts usage analysis module. I won't go through that because that hasn't been um, enabled for this for this phase. So that's the strategy optimization. Again, it's it's one of the bigger areas within AMT. There is the 
contract management side. So this is all your contract financial reporting. And um, it covers a lot of the similar functionality that was in Analyzer, but a lot more, and there's a lot more flexibility within, within AMT to handle different contract types, different billing methods, and uh, there's a lot more analyses of cash flows, margins, profit recognition, etc. Uh, budgeting and forecasting. So just being able to do live forecasts, um, you know, cost forecasts, uh, but also the budgeting module allows you to take a um, take a snapshot of any budget of any forecast and save it as a budget. So then it's not going to change as the rest of AMT is dynamic and it keeps being updated. It takes that snapshot and allows you to prepare budgets. Um, and save those. But the second part of it is then be, um, enabling you to do performance analytics against that budget. So if you put a budget together at the start of the calendar year, we're now sitting in May or June, it allows you to then compare your actual performance against budget and forecast how you're likely to end up at the end of the, the year. So it's almost like that PCV on your mark contracts, but it's now looking at it in the context of an annual budget. Um, it doesn't have to be an annual budget. It can be any time period. It can be five years, ten years, any time period that you wish, but generally the example would be an annual budget. So where we talk about budgeting here, it's, it's your counting budgets. It's your um, very much um, accounting focus as opposed to your mark budgets. So we have both the preparation and the performance analytics and your sort of compliance to plan and those sort of summary reports. I won't go through the component capacity side because we'll actually cover that under the, the EMP presentation. Under the reporting side, we've got daily reports. So there's a lot of um, functionality that we've added to try and bring information to the user's attention. What we find is that there's a lot of reports in AMT, a couple of hundred, about 300 different reports. A maintenance manager coming in on a Monday morning doesn't have time to go and run every single report to look for exceptions, look for variances, etc. So we have three areas that we try and bring information to their attention. The first is the quick watch. So any uh, transaction or things that meet certain exception criteria, we put into the quick watch. So examples might be a, uh, a change in your PCV on the contract by more than a certain amount. Uh, you might nominate if there's a change in the PCV by more than 100,000 Rand, then you want it to appear. And the, the, the event or the, the, um, that strategy task that is triggering that will be what is, what is listed. Uh, maybe any cost of 50,000 Rand that is not a strategy cost, meaning it is just going into the unassigned area in AMT. Uh, or maybe if there's a cost, if there's a variance on a strategy task by more than 10% of its budget, it'll appear. So you can, there's all of these different sort of categories where it's, it's exception driven. Anything in the last three days that meets that exception that you've defined will then appear on this grid. The second is the dashboard. So that just shows you your, your KPIs and, um, and allows users to see their, you know, things like availability in the last 48 hours or month to date, utilization. What's your level of overdue strategy tasks, your backlog ratios? Again, those sort of key indicators on are you under control? Um, what's your, what's your performance like? And then the last area of messages, this only really applies for your condition monitoring at the moment. So it's, it's one of the, one of the outputs from when we bring in condition monitoring data. And again, that's a phase two sort of, uh, project. So I'll, I'll skip over that. The monthly reporting. So AMT has um, monthly reporting split into the equipment performance. 
So this is your availability, reliability, utilization, productivity sort of reports. Uh, costs, just cost analyses, cost versus budget, um, those reports, and then your maintenance efficiency. So these are your, say, your planning reports, your backlog aging, your service accuracy, your quality of work performed, your um, example of that would be your mean time to first stoppage after PN. So um, so we try and have KPI reports that measure the outputs of the process, being your equipment performance, your costs, but also performance KPI reports around your that maintenance process. So it, uh, again, the planning, particularly the planning and the execution of work. And then we have an IC, which is a new module that we've released. Um, it's a data warehouse, and it has pre-built reporting cubes, so users can actually go and write their own reports. It's not designed for all users to be able to do that. They've got to be fairly technical or IT savvy. They need to know how to, for example, write um, reports on pivot tables, and Excel is probably a good sort of benchmark. And there is some specific training that they need. But it does give uh, Bolo World the ability to write their own reports and publish those reports without having to come back to our solutions to say, can you please write me a report? Okay, so that covers a, a very quick sort of run through of the solution map within AMT. And um, so I'll finish this segment now and then the third segment. Uh, will be around the EMP and this, this component capacity management side. Thank you.